it's actually very satisfying. I, I got a, a message the other day from a student of Project Pro saying, thank you for explaining logistic regression. I finally understood it. I had had classes about it in university, but you explained it in a way that I understood. And that was so great. Hello and welcome to yet another session of Expert Talk with Project Pro. Today we have with us Anna Garcia, who has recently joined SIP Recruiter as the Director of Data Science and Analytics. Welcome, Anna, and thank you so much for doing this with us today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And I will leave the floor open to you and ask you to introduce yourself to our viewers. Sure. Okay. So my name is Anna, and I'm originally from Brazil. I have an econ background. Um, I also did most of my education in Brazil. And I have been working in data science and analytics ever since I started working. I have worked in consulting companies, a little bit of airlines, retail, um, before joining uh, the ride sharing industry um, and eventually coming to the United States. I worked both for Uber and Lyft before joining ZipRecruiter, where I currently uh, direct an organization in data science and analytics. That's awesome to hear, Anna. And you have been with us before also, and you have been associated with Project Pro for roughly 10 months now. You are a very experienced data scientist. Uh, Anna, when you see a platform like, say, Kaggle and GitHub, and you see, on the other hand, Project Pro, how would you differentiate between the two? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. Um, I would say both Kaggle and, and GitHub their platform whose focus is uh, is on knowledge sharing among data scientists, so people to share for people to share their code, the work, the things that they're working on, as well as creating you know fun things where we could interact with each other, like competitions in Kaggle, etc. The cool thing about Project Pro is that it combines uh, both the knowledge sharing, but also uh, the education and coaching, um, and a little bit of real industry experience. So you can see people working on very specific problems in their industries, applying data science and data analytics techniques. Um, and by following these courses, you can have a very good idea, not only of the theory behind it, but also how do you do these things in, in real life in the industry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, like you know, one very important and in fact, key part of our product is the reusability of projects. Uh, who do you think uh, can reuse these projects and how much time something like this uh, could save? Well, I think like the more experience you become, you, the experience you become, the more you're going to develop uh, your own set of like basic tools and, and techniques and hacks that you reuse over and over again. And I think every experienced data scientist ends up having one of those. The cool thing about Project Pro is that you have this at scale, so you can actually access reusable code from experienced data scientists across the industry. So when you are starting a new project, you can always reference what people have done in the past. Um, and, and this way you have one more knowledge, but also you don't have to do all the legwork yourself. You can actually build from, from where they left off. Um, my courses are intro courses in Project Pro for people that have li little to no experience in data science or data, data analytics. And I personally used a lot of my code uh, in these courses, because the, the techniques that I use are pretty basic techniques that, you know, are, are good starting sets and starting models. So for example, when you're doing a classification problem, of course, like they're super sophisticated techniques, but it helps to start with the most basic models to see, okay, what do those very basic things you? So um, it's super useful to have like a function that quickly helps you uh, run a logistic regression or uh, a regression tree fast so you can quickly see the results um, uh, without having to write the, the code from scratch. Got it, got it. And uh, Anna, you, I believe you, your uh, roughly four or five of, our, of your projects are already live on Project Pro. Yes. Uh, but Project Pro as a platform uh, provides uh, 250 projects we have on our platform right now. Why do you think a user, a beta practitioner, or a learner needs 250 projects of repository and not just two, three, four? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. So the, the interesting thing is that uh, in order to do the best models, uh, you actually need to get a very specific and apply a different set of techniques, right? So, so let's take the classification example that I was talking about, right? You have like the basic classification models that everybody uses, but... 
um, there's so many nuances and, and, and particularities about it. So you may be dealing with a classification problem with like a very extreme class imbalance. And you want to see how people dealt with a situation like this. Um, but even, even if you, you want to look only at problems with like imbalance of class, you want to look at like data sets that are similar to yours or, or problems that are, you know, uh, that, that are comparable to what you were doing. So in reality, the more projects that we have, the more reference we have, um, and the better we res results we can get at the end. Yeah, this is one of the questions our customers very often ask, why do I need these many projects? So I think you've answered this in a very beautiful manner. And I think another thing to say is that one of the coolest things about data science and analytics and technology in general is that it keeps evolving, right? So the way that I would solve a classification problem five years ago is different than the, the methods and that, that we have today, right? So um, we are always going to be needing more and more projects uh, as technology gets you know, expanded and updated. Got it. Yeah, that's helpful. Uh, uh, Anna, my next question to you is, can you describe your steps that you personally take to ensure end-to-end -end user proficiency? So I think like, first of all, you have to do your research and, and understand very well uh, what is the theory behind the models that you are using. One of the wonderful things nowadays about the multiple libraries that we have out there is that many of them are pretty easy to use without a lot of like necessarily knowledge of what is actually behind that. Uh, but the problem with taking an approach where I just use a library that I don't really understand the theory behind it and I just throw the numbers in there and I get a result and, and I float this around. The problem is that in, in reality, you may be getting some biases and things that are not really uh, portraying to the end users because you actually didn't research the theory. So for me, like the, the, third, the first thing is like, know your theory, know the basics behind that. It doesn't need to be the, the perfect, most complicated math, but but do know the basics and the theory. Then the second thing for me is uh, get examples, real examples and applications and, and people that have done similar problems in the past and take a look at how they have solved them. And the third thing, um, I would say, you know, we, we should never be aiming for a single method that solves it all. So what I like to do is use a variety of methods to solve the, that problem and kind of like compare the solutions and see, you know, where are we landing? This this yields a much more robust, robust solution. Okay. So uh, because you uh, just said uh, that technologies keep coming and it keeps evolving and you also need to refer to several places to, you know, stay updated. How do you as a learner stay up to date with the latest trends in the data science industry? That's that's a very good question. I personally like to stay up to date with the universities and seeing what are the new classes they are bringing in, right? What are the new things that they are teaching students nowadays? I personally have mentored uh, uh, one of the classes in Berkeley in the data science program last year. That was a wonderful experience because I could see, wow, they're teaching these kids a lot of very interesting things. Uh, but other than that, resources that I really like are practical industry applications of data science. So I always keep an eye on meta research on Amazon science. They have a lot of publications and seeing, you know, what are these top tech companies like researching and pursuing? And it's super interesting because not only they come up with like different rigorous uh, methods, uh, it's also very applicable to, to my work sometimes. Sometimes they are solving very specific problems that I'm like, wow, I have a similar situation. So that's how I keep up to them. Got it. Yeah, that's uh, super, super helpful. So now you've been years into data science, but I'm sure when uh, you had started, you also wouldn't know a lot of things. And there are so many right now freshers who want to pursue data science as a career. So what is the one action you would recommend somebody who's new to data science right now takes? I think uh, one tendency I see is that people want to uh, get specialized sooner than they actually need, right? So they want to choose a particular field or a particular study topic and become the experts on it and kind of like ignore all, all the rest. Um, you hear a lot uh, about that regarding machine learning or natural language processing. People that like, that's the only thing that I want to uh, be specialized in. And I would say, unless you have a very good reason to do that, that was your academic research, that is like something you're really, really sure if you're just getting started, I would say 
experiment a bit and become a generalist, like understand the basic methods of the most important data science fields. And, and from then on, you can decide if you want to go on a more generalist path, if you want to go on a product path, if you want to go on a machine learning path, engineering and etc. And there's so many new different careers that are going to come up. Right. Uh, so you would suggest that one should cover the breadth of the subject as well and not just the depth of the subject. Absolutely. Correct. Got it. Uh, what is one thing you wish you knew before uh, about data science before you started, uh, before you jumped into this career? Um, I think like when I started, I was uh, very obsessed with the with the science part of it. And, and I was... Uh, sure that it was about finding the right answer and I was sure that I was going to encounter problems that were very you know clear-cut answers I could say this is the answer this is the number this is how much lift this this new feature is going to give to your revenue and etc um, and what I learned is that this is as much science as it, it is a little bit of art problems are complex uh, if you take a few like causal inference, for example, I have a very simple intro course on causal inference. Um, it's it's not really an, an exact science, quote unquote. There is not necessarily, you cannot see the right answer. You can come up with an estimate, but you could also use different methods that would you do a slightly different estimate. So um, that would actually have made me even more interested in data science because I think that's, that's the cool thing, right? That you use science to answer ambiguous problems, difficult problems uh, with techniques. Yeah, that makes so much of sense, yeah. Like, uh, that there's always going to be ambiguity around. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, like, if you do not feel comfortable with ambiguity or with, you know, having multiple answers or sometimes no answer to a particular problem, this happens a lot in the industry, um, you should not pursue data science because, because we are always dealing with ambiguity. I say that whenever business users know the answer, they don't come to data science. They only come to us when they don't know the answer and the problem is ambiguous. Got it. Yeah. So be open to ambiguous answers, first thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, my next question, Anna, and uh, my last question for today would be not just for our uh, uh, learners or practitioners, but also for someone who wants to be a part of Project Pro as an expert like you are. So in your oh. opinion, what recommendations or suggestions would you make to an applicant for someone uh, who wants to apply for your role at Project Pro? Yeah, absolutely. So um, first of all, I think Project Pro, Pro uh, being an expert is, is a lot of fun because it gives me the opportunity to actually like uh, refresh some concepts. So when I am you know, thinking of a course, I have to think through like, how, how can I make someone that uh, is not an expert on this yet? Or in my case, that are beginner courses doesn't have necessarily prior knowledge. How can I make them understand uh, how much depth is enough? You know, so so it gives me an opportunity to refresh that. So I, I'd say the first thing is get excited about this opportunity because it's also an opportunity for you to learn. Uh, not only to, you know, uh, do do a, a project as an expert, but for you to learn and, and refresh. Um, and the second thing is that definitely be open to feedback and, and think about how a different a person that is different from you will receive that content. And you and you have to have that mindset of someone else and not yourself. So I like to receive content in, in, in a certain way, but you have to think like how would the average person or the average person looking for this cor course would most likely benefit from this content. Um, it's actually very satisfying. I, I got a, a message the other day from a student of Project Pro saying, thank you for explaining logistic regression. I finally understood it. I had had classes about it in university, but you explained it in a way that I understood. And that was so great. Because, um, you know, obviously I, I am not a match for whatever professor that he had academically, but the way that I explained makes sense for that person and they could grasp the concept, which is what matters in the end. So that made me very happy. Yeah, that is uh, that, that that I can understand as a as an explain uh, as someone who has been teaching or someone who has been trying to explain some con uh, concept. It would have been such a proud moment for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that was my last question to you, Anna. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for having me at Project Pro. It's very exciting to be an expert. Yeah, thank you.